Two of Europe's most iconic cities, Paris and Milan, will soon be connected by the longest railway tunnel in the world. And it's all happening in the Susa Valley, a picturesque mountain retreat in northern Italy, nestled right on the border with France. The valley's charm lies in its tranquility, quiet, serene, and untouched. But beneath this calm exterior, something monumental is underway. One of Europe's most ambitious construction projects is racing toward completion, set to change the landscape of travel and trade. In just a few years, this peaceful valley will host a state-of-the-art high-speed railway as part of the Trans-European Transport Network. But there's a massive challenge standing in the way, the towering Alps. To conquer this natural barrier, engineers are digging deeper than ever before, carving through mountains to create what will be the longest rail tunnel in the world. So how exactly do you build a train line through the middle of the Alps? We'll tell you all about it and more in this video. However, this isn't just a train line. It's a $28 billion mega project designed to cut travel times, reduce emissions, and revolutionize how goods and people move across the Alps. It's been named the Mont dambem based tunnel, quickly becoming the centerpiece of the Turin-Lyon high-speed highway. If you're traveling between Lyon and France and Turin in Italy, the distance might seem like no big deal, just a few hundred kilometers. But the reality? A train journey between these cities takes about four hours thanks to the steep, winding mountain routes. The Fréjus Tunnel, the oldest of these paths, dates back to 1871. Back then, it was revolutionary. Today, not so much. With its narrow single tube and steep gradient, trains expend more energy than they would on a flatter line. It's a historic marvel, sure, but it just doesn't cut it for modern freight and high-speed rail standards. Unlike older routes that climb up valleys to cross mountain ranges, base tunnels like Mont d'Ambin take a different approach. They stay as low as possible, avoiding steep climbs and ensuring faster, more energy-efficient travel. At 57.5 kilometers, the Mont dambem based tunnel will be the longest rail tunnel in the world, overtaking the gotthard based tunnel in Switzerland. It's been designed to carry both high-speed passenger trains and freight, making travel faster and more sustainable. Trains will cruise through the tunnel at up to 220 km per hour for passengers and 100 km per hour for freight. This engineering marvel comes with far-reaching impacts. The high-speed rail link will slash travel times between Milan and Paris, making rail a real competitor to air travel. By moving freight from trucks to trains, the project will also help reduce CO2 emissions and air pollution in the Alps. And that's not all. The tunnel is also set to strengthen trade and tourism between France and Italy while integrating their economies even further. The vision for this monumental tunnel has been in the making for decades, but it wasn't until 2002 that initial construction began with access points. Significant progress was made from 2016 to 2019, during which a 9-kilometer exploratory tunnel was completed to study the route and geological conditions. In 2019, full-scale construction officially kicked off with contracts awarded for various sections. Today, all four access tunnels, three in France and one in Italy, are completed, and massive tunnel boring machines are steadily carving through the Alps. While the project is set for completion in 2032, each milestone brings this engineering marvel closer to fruition. However, this ambitious mega project has also faced its share of hurdles. In Italy, the no TAV movement in the Susa Valley has vocally opposed the tunnel. Their concerns, environmental impact, safety and cost effectiveness, and local disruptions. The protests were so influential that they helped shape the tunnel's extended design. Originally planned to be 52 kilometers long, the tunnel's design was extended to its current length of 57.5 kilometers after protests in the Susa Valley. The change aimed to reduce surface level disruption, but it also came with a hefty price tag. An estimated $8.5 billion for the joint Franco-Italian section alone. But what's a mega project without a little controversy? Protests in the Susa Valley, sometimes involving tens of thousands of people, have even led to clashes with the police. And resistance isn't confined to Italy either. In France, critics, including Lyon's own mayor, have voiced concerns about the project's environmental impact and questioned whether the funds could be better spent upgrading existing infrastructure. But despite the opposition, construction marches on, with completion expected by 2032. The engineering itself has also been a complex undertaking with certain sections requiring precision blasting through challenging geology, leading to slower progress. Then there's the cost. The tunnel accounts for roughly a third of the entire project's budget. However, backers, including the European Union, believe the long-term economic and environmental benefits far outweigh the expense. To carve through the Alps, engineers are blending time-tested techniques with cutting-edge technology. 
In the hardest rock areas, they're using the traditional drill and blast method, heavy-duty drills, and explosives to break through the toughest geology. But for most of the tunnel, it's all about tunnel boring machines. These enormous machines, like the mighty Federica, have already made significant progress on the French side, drilling through some of the mountain's most complex rock formations. Federica worked tirelessly for three years before being disassembled and removed through a pre-built shaft. In total, seven TBMs are tackling this ambitious project, with 162 kilometers of underground tunnels and shafts still to be completed. But it's not just about digging forward. Safety and air quality are paramount as well. Vertical ventilation shafts are being built to ensure proper airflow and safety throughout the tunnel. These shafts are drilled using raised boring machines, which excavate from the bottom up, and each one stretches more than 500 meters deep. To put that into perspective, they're taller than Shanghai's World Financial Center. The tunnel boasts impressive engineering feats. Each segment of the tunnel weighs 10 tons and is constructed using advanced automation for speed and sustainability. One TBM even achieved a remarkable daily average of 15 to 20 meters, a testament to the precision and efficiency of modern tunneling technology. The contracts for building this colossal tunnel range from $250 million to $1.62 billion, depending on the geological challenges faced in different sections. But this project isn't just about connecting two cities. It's about reshaping transportation across Europe through innovation, resilience, and ambition. However, it's not all smooth sailing. The French side of the project faces some of the toughest geological conditions with fractured and unstable coal-bearing rock that's unsuitable for tunnel-boring machines. So what's the solution? Go old school with drilling and blasting. This method is being used for a challenging 5-kilometer section near Saint-Jean-de-Maurienne. On the Italian side, conditions are much more favorable allowing the advanced tunnel boring machines to carve through the mountains at record speeds. Together, these innovative techniques are driving this monumental project closer to its goal, the longest rail tunnel in the world, set to revolutionize travel and trade across Europe. And it's not happening in isolation. Since 2013, the Trans-European Transport Network has been reshaping how Europe connects. From Finland to Malta, massive projects like the Brenner Base Tunnel and the Femarn Built Fix Link are transforming old routes into high-speed corridors fit for the 21st century. Money Talks in the Mondambem Base Tunnel speaks three languages, French, Italian, and EU funding. The cost of this ambitious project is being shared between France and Italy, with the European Union contributing a significant 40% of the total funding. If certain conditions are met, the EU's contribution could even increase to 55% easing the financial burden on the two countries. The cross-border section is being managed by Tunnel Europin Leon Turin, a collaboration between the French and Italian governments. However, not everyone is convinced that this massive investment is justified. A 2012 report from the French Court of Audit raised concerns about the project's financial feasibility. The report questioned the accuracy of cost estimates and whether the projected traffic levels would be enough to make the investment worthwhile in the long run. Despite these concerns, the project continues to move forward, with its supporters arguing that the benefits will eventually outweigh the costs. So what's in it for us? The said benefits include dramatically reducing travel times between Milan and Paris, making cross-border travel faster and more efficient. It'll also help alleviate traffic congestion in the Alps by shifting freight transport from trucks to trains, cutting down on the number of heavy vehicles crossing these mountainous regions. Most importantly, the tunnel will provide a cleaner, greener alternative to road and air travel. There's still a long way to go, literally. While the Mont damain based tunnel will undoubtedly revolutionize travel between Milan and Paris, its impact extends far beyond these two iconic cities. This ambitious project is a key part of a broader European vision for sustainable and efficient transportation. By connecting major hubs across the continent, it'll make cross-border trade faster and more reliable, fostering stronger economic ties between Italy, France, and the rest of Europe. And the benefits don't stop with business and trade. By shifting freight from trucks to trains, the tunnel will significantly decrease the number of heavy vehicles on the Alpine roads, preserving the delicate mountain ecosystem and reducing air pollution. This project also showcases some of the most advanced technologies in the world, and the integration of these cutting-edge technologies ensures that the tunnel is not only built efficiently, but also built to last, with advanced safety features, ventilation systems, and fire prevention protocols. And despite the challenges and controversies surrounding the project, there are signs of growing local support. Many people in the region recognize the long-term benefits, from improved transportation to the economic opportunities that will arise once the tunnel is complete. Increased tourism, easier access for business, and job creation during the construction phase are just a few of the positive outcomes that are expected in the Sousa Valley. 
Yet the balance between progress and preserving the local environment and way of life remains delicate. Ongoing dialogue between the project's backers and local communities is essential to ensure that the tunnel's construction brings about positive change without compromising the valley's natural beauty. And that is why, looking ahead, the Mont Dambin-based tunnel is more than just a milestone in transportation. It's a blueprint for future infrastructure projects. By blending innovation, sustainability, and resilience, the tunnel is setting the stage for a more interconnected, efficient, and sustainable Europe. There's still a long way to go, but with each new development, this once impossible dream is becoming a reality. As the project nears its 2032 completion, the tunnel will not only connect two cities, but will connect cultures, economies, and people across borders, making Europe stronger, faster, and more sustainable for generations to come. And that's a wrap on today's journey through the Mont Dambin based tunnel. It represents a bold step forward in sustainable transport, but is it worth the $28 billion price tag? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to support our channel.